So today we have a video of Gary Brecka, who is a self-proclaimed human biologist. Whatever that means, and you can take it for what it's worth. Gary also used to work in the insurance ind industry in some capacity. I'm not really sure, so I'm not going to speak on that. But in this video that I found on TikTok, the good old TikToker, he talks about what he is proclaiming to be the number one cause of postpartum depression. Okay. And you're going to hear him attribute it to a gene mutation. And I'm going to let the video play so we can watch a little bit of it and then I'll comment throughout. So here we go. Does anyone know what the leading cause of postpartum depression is? The lead no, Gary, I don't think you do either. Leading cause of postpartum depression in pregnant females. The prenatal vitamin. So we're off to an insane start. Really insane start. He is attributing the prenatal vitamin that all pregnant women are told to take by their OBGYN, unless there are certain circumstances. And he is attributing that to the leading cause of postpartum depression. Let's see what, I don't know, the NIH has to say. So the NIH says that postpartum depression develops around the time a woman gives birth. Women with postpartum depression often struggle with anxiety, sadness, difficulty sleeping, or disturbing thoughts. Research suggests that it is triggered by changes in hormones and that women with postpartum depression are sensitive to those changes. I'm not seeing anything in here about the gene mutation that he is about to talk about or the prenatal vitamin. 44% of the women in this room have a gene mutation called MTHFR. All right, we're going to stop it right there again, because according to the a a a AHA, the American Heart Association, MTHFR, how common are the mutations? As you can see, in the United States, approximately 20 to 40% of white and Hispanic individuals are heterozygous for the C677T. Notice how he does not delineate between the other mutation, which is the A198C. Okay? And also it is to note that these gene mutations are very, very different depending on population or what country you're from or your ethnicity. Let's continue. I'm not going to tell you what the nickname is for this gene mutation. MTH. Yes, it is called that gene. MTHFR. 44% of you have this gene mutation. Again, approximately 20 to 40%. It is a complete inability to process folic acid. If you can't process folic acid and your OBGYN tells you to... So let's see what the CDC says about the MTHFR gene. Okay, here's the CDC website. The MTHFR gene provides instructions for your body to make the protein, which helps your body process folate. Okay, you need that to make DNA and modify proteins. Uh, the most common variant, which we saw from the American Heart Association, the C677T, the number of people who have each of these genotypes will vary from population to population, as we saw. When consuming the same amount of folic acid, people with uh, the 677TT have an average uh, that is only slightly lower than people with the CC. Okay, and another gene variant is the 1298C. There is not enough evidence to show that the MTHFR A1298C variant alone significantly affects how the body processes folate. So we're going to assume that he's talking about the, the C677T variant. People with this variant can process all types of folate, including folic acid. So we're already off to a rough start, okay? You might have read or heard that folic acid is not safe if you have one or two copies of, the, of this variant. 
This is not true according to the CDC. Even if you have one or two copies of the variant, your body can safely and effectively process all different types of folate, including folic acid. Folic acid is the only type of folate shown to help prevent neural tube defects. Okay, which is probably why OBs want you taking a prenatal during pregnancy. It's more common in some races and ethnicities than in others. Hispanic individuals are more likely than non-Hispanic whites and non-Hispanic blacks, which he fails to mention in this video. He says all women, 40, 40, 44% of all women, and it's a leading cause. Take a prenatal vitamin with 1,400% of the folic acid. Guess what happens? You go nuts. You go nuts from taking a prenatal vitamin. He said that. He actually said that. So I went and found a couple of studies. <sighs> a 2020 study by Morris, by Emily Morris et al. They recruited 365 pregnant women with a history of mood or, psych or psychotic disorder. At three postpartum time points, administered Edinburgh postnatal depression scale, clinician administered rating scale for mania, or CARS M, in the positive and negative symptom scale, PANS, and drew blood for genotype folate level analysis. No significant interaction was found, intera interaction effect between the genotype and folate level on the highest of the EPDS scale. There was, however, a significant interaction between genotype, folate level, and CARS M. Now remember, these women already have a history of mood or psychotic disorders. There was no significant interaction between the MTHFR genotype and folate level on the likelihood of meeting positive symptom criteria for psychosis on the PANS. A 2015 systematic review by Kutu Tiago Castro. At all, let me see if I can find that. They found the prevalence of postpartum depression to be between 10 to 15%. Despite its multifactorial etiology, it is known that genetics play an important role in the genesis of postpartum depression. They also noted in their core tip, if you come down to here, MTHFR, CYP2D6, and PER2 polymorphisms were not related to this mood disorder. Polymorphisms of oxytocin, steroids, and estrogen genes were positively correlated with postpartum depression. The, six, the C677T polymorphism was also studied in a study that focused on the association between uh, the MTHFR and postpartum depression. Its results indicated that low folate levels do not appear to be a significant risk factor for peripartum depression, but may be a factor for non-gestational related depression, especially in women with this gene mutation. We also have from Frontiers, a systematic review article or a meta-analysis. And what they found was the association between MTHFR polymorphism and mental illness has already been explored, but the influence of MTHFR and psychiatric disorders is still disputed and limited studies have been found. These inconsistencies might be attributed to limited sample size, ethnic, ethnic heterogeneity, and differences in population substructure. And what they found, association between the MTHR C677T slash A1298C polymorphisms and major depression. This table right here shows the main results as well as the heterogeneity test. MTHFR C677T polymorphism was shown to be highly associated with an in increased risk of developing uh, major depression in all statistical models. Subgroup analysis by ethnicity revealed a substantial correlation between the gene mutation and major depression in Asian populations, but not Caucasian and African, Amer African populations. So again, it seems that this may be specific to ethnicity. And right now we're kind of getting answers all over the board with Hispanics versus non-Hispanics, Asian populations and African populations. And you become depressed. Eventually the pregnancy ends and you stop taking the prenatal vitamin and the symptoms go away. So you blame it on the pregnancy, not on the vitamin. This happens to thousands of women because you don't know that you have this issue. So he's saying that you take, first off, he speaks about postpartum depression, which means after giving birth. But he's talking about you taking a prenatal vitamin during your pregnancy and having symptoms of depression. 
But then he's talking about when you have your baby and you're actually postpartum and you stop taking your prenatal vitamin, that your symptoms go away and you aren't actually experiencing depression. So to me, that doesn't sound like postpartum depression. I think they would call that peripartum. Maybe I'm not an OB, but it sounds like he doesn't even know what postpartum means. And that's kind of a big deal. If you're going to sit here and say, you're talking about the truth about postpartum depression and taking a prenatal is causing postpartum depression. Yet you're talking about taking the full or the prenatal vitamin during pregnancy, having depression coming off the prenatal vitamin after giving birth and not having symptoms of depression and associating it with this gene mutation. I think my main point of this is Gary doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about. He's not a doctor. If you have this gene mutation or are concerned you may have this gene mutation, the one thing I will say about this gene mutation is that it may be a risk factor for having a, for depression in the first place, regardless of pregnancy, pregnancy status. Um, so maybe it's something to talk to your OB about and say, Hey, can I get tested for this gene mutation? I think some would actually say it's not necessary um, because as the CDC says that you should take it anyways, because your body can still process folate safely and effectively, maybe just not as well if you did not have that gene mutation. Again, I am not a doctor. I am not an OB, but I do know that you can read, we can read studies and we can look at the science and see what the data says because data rules all. And we need to stop. You guys need to stop following people like Gary Brecca. Okay. He is a charlatan and he just proved it in this video that he doesn't even know what postpartum means. We'll see in the next one.